My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we're talking about two-stroke uh, engine braking on the back of the four-stroke engine braking. So, how does it work? We hear a lot of people say, well, vacuum and so on. So, we have the top of our cylinder, combustion chamber, an exhaust port, overhanging that transfer port. We're going to do this nice and big and plain and simple. Like so. Oh, we can make it a bit smaller because it's not that fucking big, you dickhead. So, the only two things I need to put in here is a different colour of the reeds and what they are doing. So, just use a V and we'll just use the flappy flappies. Right, so, just as with the four stroke one, what's happening is, is we have closed. Oh, that's what I've missed. We have our normal butterfly and we've just got it, same kind of thing, we've got it open three quarters of the way and you know, it's this cross section here, if you look at it straight on. What that looks for and what I didn't do in the four stroke video is that there is your port. Now I know people are going to say, ah well some of them have transitions and blah blah blah, you know, some of these aren't perfect circles, that's what I'm saying. But when you've got something like this you'll basically have that and obviously your rotation bar in the centre so this is kind of what you're looking at, this port area and port area um, we'll talk about butterflies one day but anyway what happens is is as you're, um, you're on your power stroke, this is different than the four stroke one this is why you have to understand the four stroke one straight away is that the piston's on its way down so the pressure in here is really high yeah, and we'll just signify it by how many arrows we have. There's just fucking loads. The pressure in there is really high. It is going against the head, but we don't need that for this description. It is pressing everywhere against everything, but we don't need that. So our um, our downforce, um, and I don't mean downforce like aerodynamics, I mean our force going downwards, our downforce is pretty big. And obviously this is what powers your engine and so on and then as soon as you um, start going down you're going to start to pressurize this which means that pressure closes your reeds like so pressure's going down this increases it transfers it it loses the pressure as it transfers because it's expanding if it expands it accelerates which means the pressure drops as the piston goes down it expands into the cylinder fills the cylinder goes out of the exhaust port unfortunately then your um, expansion chamber if you've got one boots it back in just as last minute as it closes up so we all understand that which is all good now what happens when you close the throttle just like we did with our four stroke so we close our throttle like so and again we end up with this little sliver same kind of deal like that a little sliver smaller than that probably you know, this little crescent sliver, I won't say a crescent moon, it's tiny. And what happens now is that you go bang from your stroke, and the difference with two strokes is, is they're always kind of lagging behind. Um, and because the strokes are all compressed into two strokes instead of four strokes, instead of being separated out, the whole process is different. So we'll just say we have just closed the throttle. There's a bang, there's a lot of pressure in the actual combustion chamber and cylinder-ish on top of the piston yeah basically combustion chamber pushes the piston down which is all good the fact of the matter is we've now closed this the piston comes down, compresses everything as normal and then it transfers and all is good the problem comes which is the opposite to um, four strokes is engine braking doesn't happen here because the piston is coming down this is initially part of the system so then obviously when you've got your piston down here at bottom dead center as far as it will go down kind of thing what happens is, is you've compressed the mixture here which is all good now let's think about as the piston goes back up again as the piston goes back up 
the pressure drops in here because it is a low, uh, a volume that is increasing. And then when it gets the when it gets to here, it shuts off the transfer ports. Now, theoretically, we have a sealed system. It's sealed by the transfer port. There's leakage past the rings, but just ignore that for the minute. The piston is on its way on its way up. So the volume inside the crankcase is increasing. But the piston's on its way up. This volume is increasing. The air outside has to slither past this tiny gap. So it slithers past this tiny gap. It makes it through your reeds no problem because this is a lot lower than this is. So where's our red pen? Our volume is going up, which is the opposite to the two stroke. You've got to remember, we had volume increasing when the piston was going down. So the volume is increasing and you're drawing very little air and fuel into here and then you're, um, you're trying to compress mixture here. But obviously it's been squirted out. Now, as you're trying to compress, it squirts out like this. But this is now um, a higher pressure than in here, because this is decreasing and this is increasing. And the um, just like the problem with when I showed you port sizes on four strokes, the port sizes on two strokes, in a sense you've got a cylinder here, like this. With an exhaust port, it can be oval, it can be whatever. You've got an exhaust port, and this volume is getting smaller. The bottom is coming out of this. So any pressure gains, any pressure gains from the piston coming up, means that um, it, it kind of leaks out of the exhaust. But then what happens at the last minute is, as you're just about, so just say our piston's now here, it's just about to close off the exhaust port, Obviously your back pressure comes in from the previous combustion and just dumps shitloads in here. And it dumps shitloads in here and there's a really big vacuum down here. So what happens is, is that you have uh, engine braking, you do have engine braking, this is why they have engine braking. But it's not the way you think, it's not from this side yet. It's kind of like, it, it, it's like, a two, it, it's, it's engine braking. Blah, 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 blah. It's hot, forgive me. It's like engine, it, it, it is engine braking, but it's not for the same reasons that happen in a four stroke. So, moving on, now what happens is you go to the top of your top dead centre, you get this normal, you get a, a good bang, there's fucking very little resisting it, that's all it is. It's just a normal combustion process from just before, the cycle before, because the, the top of the cylinder is always lagging a cycle before the other one, uh, before the previous one. Where a four stroke, it's quite instantaneous when you shut down the throttle. The next intake stroke will start to suffer from um, intake. Um, sorry, from engine braking. Where with this, it's it's always one behind. But when you're going 5,000 RPM, who gives a shit? But we're talking about the very, very fundamentals here. So, as the piston goes bang, there's very little pressure in here. So you get a tiny bit more, which is exactly what you don't want. Because um, you're trying to brake with your engine. But then it all kind of sorts it out. It sorts its life out afterwards. Now what happens is when your piston comes down, there's very little, um, very little uh, compression here, and this can be a problem. So what happens is, is that the volume is decreasing. You will up the pressure, but you generally don't get up to atmospheric. So as soon as the uh, intake tries to flow into the cylinder, whatever's in the exhaust is generally higher pressure. So then you get a flood back, and this, in a sense, is what can also help with engine braking, is that all the schmoo and shite in your exhaust can actually come in, and it's almost like a, a self-regulating um, exhaust gas recirculation, where you're pulling in um, exhaust gases, which has two um, effects on the engine. One that you know that lowers, that dampens combustion an awful lot. So then you start to reduce power, and then all again. Um, aerodynamic forces, rolling road resistance, all these things really then do start to take the toll. The only other problem is though is it does add heat into your engine which does dampen um, which does dampen your uh, uh, combustion rate but you are ingesting hot gases and anyone who knows some little knobhead who's put his corn filter on the inside of his 
boy racer car, his sacks or whatever, and he's put it right above the engine or right next to the exhaust manifold, and his engine's constantly overheating because it's ingesting hot gas. That's exactly what you don't want. That's what intercoolers are for, uh, you know, and um, cold air intakes and all that kind of shite. So this is a yet another thing that can also, um, when we were talking about engine braking, going from really high RPM and shutting off the throttle, uh, not only are you starving this entire engine of the um, petrol slash gasoline that it needs to, to uh, wet the cylinders, evaporate and take some of that heat away with it by cooling, by solvent cooling, um, not only that is you're starving the engine of oil and then you start to have, you start to ingest a bit of your own hot gases that have just pissed out the exhaust. There's always gas in there, this is the thing. You know, these things are going like fucking nothing and the, all these pulses and pressure pulses and stuff, we'll talk more about the pressure pulses and how them waves can interfere with each other and what have you in another episode. But So engine braking does work in a two-stroke. Um, the difference is, is with a four-stroke you are relying on the rotation, you're relying on the momentum that the crankshaft has the flywheel has and you've only got one power stroke for the four strokes and you've got one power stroke and one induction stroke that are basically fighting each other and the other two strokes are just basically pissing about whereas in with a two stroke it's because it's half and half because each stroke is half um, you know it's, it's trying to do compression and it's trying to do um, induction on the same stroke, it's it's 50% of them two. So the, the difference is with a, uh, a two stroke versus a four stroke for engine braking is that people seem to think that they're quite similar because of um, because they don't think about what's going on. The, the big Achilles heel in a sense for a two stroke is that when it comes to engine braking anyway when it comes to engine braking is the fact that it has holes in the cylinder that is one of the biggest things and it's two it's kind of like two separate pumps i don't like using that word either but it's kind of two separate pumps you have two separate stages to it in a way with a piston in the middle so you know your pistons here and people say oh don't two strokes pull a vacuum no because this is combustion this is really high on the needle of pressure wise so there's no vacuum going on there when the piston comes down past this point so just say the piston is now here like this then there's no vacuum there's no real vacuum above the piston because you've just opened it to the world you've got to remember even though this is a long long exhaust pipe that goes out somewhere it does uh, it's not a sealed system it is joined to the rest of the planet and there's this pressure wave coming backwards and forwards and all that shite but still there's no vacuum above the piston, so it doesn't behave the same way. You compress this mixture, the only real vacuum that you start to pull, and it, like I said, I hate using the word vacuum, but the only real vacuum that you're pulling is on the upstroke, which is the opposite to, two, to four strokes. It is on the upstroke. As the piston starts to go up, the, um, the uh, butterfly is restricting the airflow going in which means that any pressure that's above here, even though everything's been swapped around and changed, which is, like I say, it's very hard to understand the dynamics of what's going on. It's a lot more difficult to understand this. The four-stroke one is so much more fucking easy to understand. When the piston's on its way up, it's actually been pushed back down by higher pressure up here because this is trying to basically, you know, suck through a tiny straw. You're restricting the flow going through it. Um, so, yeah, the forces, the net forces pushing down so it is a, you know it is trying to um, it is trying to do the opposite it is applying a force to the opposite way that you want the piston to go so the piston's going up and there is a pressure above that trying to stop that in anything you're trying to compress this so it's that as well as you've got to do the compression the forces that you're trying to squeeze in here especially when you close the exhaust port off when you try and close the exhaust port off now why doesn't this mean much for engine braking then why doesn't this mean much for engine braking. Now we've finished the two stroke one. Why is there a difference in feeling between two stroke and four stroke? And this is all to do with rod angle. Now I'm going to do a big series of videos about rod, rod angle because we need to look at loads of different types of ways of doing it. But on a four stroke, you have your cylinder, 
have your piston. Your piston is going from here down to here, like so. And your rod is going from here at number one down to here at number two. At number two. So as you can see, we're going through an entire 180. Not only that, is this is our perfect point. 90 degrees here is where you basically have the most amount of torque. That's all to do with the line that you're traveling linearly to the center line of your rotation. So that's where we're going to create our most torque. And this is where engine braking is most effective because um, the uh, pressure from the actual cylinder, uh, from the crankcase, pushing against the low, low pressure region in your cylinder because we've shut off um, your throttle so it can't draw much into your actual engine. The whole reason for four stroke engine braking. This is killing, <laughs> in a sense, it's supping, sapping, sorry, it's sapping the momentum that the crankshaft and the flywheel have um, as, a, as an opposing force. On two strokes, on the other hand, when we look back at our two stroke example, with our transfer ports and all that lovely gubbins. Where our um, uh, our engine braking, so to speak, takes place, where it really takes place, the most engine braking takes place here at the top, like so. And this is like 45 degrees to zero. So we're at like 45 degrees here. And this is when you've closed off your exhaust port and we're still traveling up and we're compressing this mixture in here. We've got fuck all pressure in the, the crankcase. So the pressure from compression there versus the pissy little pressure that's inside the transfer port is what is pulling against your, you know, that's what's supping your momentum out of your crankshaft. However, the, the, the conrod's just rocking above the top. It's not a full stroke. It's just rocking at the top. And the piston um, to rod angle, the amount of, um, it's like kind of like, you think about the reverse of an engine, because that's what you're doing, you're trying to drive the engine, not drive the wheels, so you're doing everything backwards. This is not much, this angle of attack from this rod really isn't much. Not only that is, as soon as you get to this point, the golden point, TDC, a bit before there, a bit after there, depending what your uh, timing is, but we'll just say, just for argument's sake, it's bang on zero degrees. Then all of a sudden, your other side of engine braking, just say if we wanted 90 degrees out of this, this is combustion. You know, from, so from here onwards, this is combustion, and that's not helping with engine braking, that's actually forcing the crank and making the crank go quicker. Even though we've got weaker combustion after every single cycle. So you can see that the engine braking of a four stroke is a lot more effective because it's over a, a, a larger amount of um, the rotation, per rotation, and with a two-stroke, it's at that point where the piston just rocks up and down a bit, where the rod just rocks up and down. So that's why you don't feel, um, that's why you don't feel uh, engine braking so much. So I hope that makes sense. I'm sure there's going to be some people a bit baffled by this because it is a hard thing to understand with two-strokes. It is very hard. Um, I wish two strokes would disappear for the one reason is, is it's so easy to dis explain how four strokes work compared to two strokes. The theory of two strokes is incredibly difficult. hope that makes sense. I'm sure there's going to be some questions. We'll probably do another one. I need to basically sit down and draw. Um, I would love to draw out an, uh, a way of ex describing it really cleverly. Maybe for some balloons on a, some cork bottles or something like that. Uh, just to show you the difference. I've got that idea for some other stuff to show you, but you know, I'm going to have to think up an apparatus to try and show you how it works. Um, but anyway, I hope that makes sense and I'll see you in a bit.